Hey everybody, welcome to the footnotes video, also known as a huge pain in the ass. Um, I've been going over this for the past couple hours and it has uh, not been easy. Definitely understand the source of your guys' frustration, um, but hopefully I can alleviate a bit of that and make some sense of how InDesign processes footnotes from words uh, and um, get you guys sorted out. So let us begin. The first thing I'm going to do is open I have a previously saved cross-section template and um, you can see that I bring that in. It's fairly uh, fairly basic except for the fact that it has my text blocks all set up and everything. Um, I did want to mention that my template, I didn't reconcile the baseline grid with my text blocks. That is not intentional, it's just laziness on my part. So if the baseline grid flashes on the screen know that um, the lack of those lining up is uh, not intentional and yours should. So anyway, um, the first thing I'm going to do is place some text uh, from Microsoft Word. I'm going to go File, Place, or Command-D. Now, I do want to make special note. Um, this needs to be checked. Show import options down here. It'll behave however you um, last left it. So if it was unchecked by default, it's got to be probably still unchecked. Um, if you checked it last time, it will be checked and tell you and check it. Um, but I think, again, by default, it's going to be unchecked. So make sure that you do check that because it's going to pop up an intermediary box that's going to give us quite a few options. So I'm going to select the text I want, click open. Here's that aforementioned box, and it's going to give us quite a few options actually. Um, there's another video that I posted to the blog that will explain all these in far more detail. Primarily, though, we want to uh, make sure that footnotes are included, um, as that's what we want to deal with. I do want to make a note that if you go down here and then click style mapping, um, this is really the source of all our headaches. These are all the potential uh, Microsoft Word styles that can be imported. And if you are dealing with this on a much larger scale, let's say you get a job at a publication and you're getting lots of documents from lots of different editors or uh, whatever, you can take the time to set up a document, a blank template like this uh, that I did, but you can um, save these paragraph styles and map specifically to them. And what that means is that if Microsoft Word style is called normal, then you can go in here and um, map it to a very specific maybe body copy uh, style. For headers, you could specify that as a very specific header style that you had created, but you can um, take the time to map those all out and that will minimize quite a few headaches in the future. Um, obviously we'll leave that for another time, it's a little more robust than we need, so we're just going to click footnotes, make sure that's set, and click OK. There's our text. I'm going to drop it in. And you can see we get this fairly ugly Microsoft Word generated text with footnotes. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, aside from the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the show hidden characters. If you go type show hidden characters, you get all these blue little symbols. This will tell us all the superfluous crap that's in there that we need to deal with eventually through grep. Um, you can also see that it drug in some paragraph styles and some character styles. Uh, I'm going to delete the Apple converted space. This doesn't have much bearing on what we're doing. It's because the original origin point of the article came from a Windows PC, as I understand it. And there's something about converting those styles in Word when we move to an Apple workspace. This footnote reference is uh, this particular little superscript. Um, and we're actually going to leave that alone for right now. We're going to modify it later, but we want to maintain that. If we get rid of it, it's just going to put a big lining number one up there, and we want to maintain that uh, demarcation for now. So we're also going to move over here. You can see there's footnote text, which is controlling this down here. We're going to leave that. There's also normal, which eventually we're going to get rid of. But right now, if we were to get rid of that, I'm going to, you can see right here, um, the italicized uh, type. If I kill that and replace it with basic paragraph, some of it's going to stay 
some of it's going to go depending on how it was initially formatted. Um, however, I don't want to count on that quite yet. So before I do anything, I'm back up, and I am going to um, I'm going to very specifically restyle these with a character style. If you click on this now, you can see this is simply somebody going up and switching from regular to italic. And what that yields is a little override. If we clear the override, you can see that italicized type goes away. Um, and we want to maintain that. I don't want to have to switch between Word and InDesign and find those and search them out. We want to handle that globally. Um, and so what we're going to do is uh, find all those. And then we are going to uh, replace them with a very specific character style that will be maintained when we switch paragraph styles. So what I'm going to do is come over here to character styles. I'm going to click create new style. We uh, do not want it to be, you can see, we do not want it to be based on anything. Um, so I'm going to click new Such a bummer. Um, you're going to have to clear this manually. Typically, it shouldn't be based on anything. But you want this to be as default as possible. All I want to call out is italic. I do not want it to be superscript. I want nothing else to be changed. It looks like we're pretty good. I'm going to call this italics. Now you could do this if uh, the author had made uh, several things bold in it or, um, you know, whatever, underlined, strike through. You could go out and create a new one for that. Um, so with that created, I'm going to open up the find and change by command F. And I'm going to search for a format. And I'm going to search, I'm going to use my basic character formats. I'm going to call out italic. And that should be it. That's all I'm looking for right now. And then I'm going to change it very specifically to my italics character style. I'm going to click story. I'm going to click find next and you can see um, right here, if it is not working through your footnotes, there's the include and exclude footnotes. So that is on. If I change it, I'm going to change all. So now, whereas this was a paragraph style override, it's no longer, right? This is now its own thing. And that's evidenced by the fact that this is now in blue. So all of my italics in here are now locked and they are uh, somewhat separate from any paragraph style that we might have uh, enjoyed before. So now I want to get this thing looking a little bit better now that that's out of the way. So I'm going to create a new style. I'm going to base it on nothing. I'm going to select setter 10 regular. This is all coming from previous type trials. 12 point letting. Normal positions, all that's good. Ligatures are on. Um, I'm going to make a space after a half leaded line. The alignment is going to be uh, left justified. I mean, this is all kind of, this doesn't really address footnotes per se, but um, I'm going to make it look nice anyway. Okay. Good. We'll get to nested styles later in a separate video. Open type features. I'm going to specify proportional old style because this is body copy and our 
num numbers, the numerals need to reflect that. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is change this to body copy. And then click OK. So I'm going to click in here. You can see it is not selecting the footnotes. We'll get to that in a bit. But I'm going to change it over to body copy. And I'm going to clear overrides. You can see though that that clear overrides did not affect our italics, whereas it would have most definitely. Um, you can uh, safely delete this and it is going to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to run a quick grep command to get rid of tabs and change them to nothing. There they go, which is super handy. Um, normally I would get rid of double paragraph returns, double spaces, um, but right now we're going to leave that alone. So we're getting there, um, but we still need to handle this. Um, there are two uh, factors uh, or two, two things that we need to style. The first is um, this right here. This is our paragraph or footnote reference. So you can see, I should back up and explain that a little bit. Um, like I said, I haven't run through this a lot, so um, still a little rusty. But um, go up to type and document footnote options. Um, this got kind of lost in the shuffle when we um, selected the uh, body copy. Uh, remove that character style. But the uh, link is still there, so if you go up to footnote options and you click footnote reference, it will make those uh, superscript again. And then down here we have the option of uh, applying a paragraph style. We're going to get to this in just a bit. We'll return to this, but for now we're going to apply that. Um, we're going to apply the uh, footnote reference character style in the uh, superscript position. And we're going to go to character styles and uh, double click on that reference, uh, that character style footnote reference that we just applied. Um, because, I guess maybe I should back up a little bit. Even though this typeface has true superscripts, uh, it is making false superscripts. Um, and I will show you what I mean. Here's a true, right? Nice big, beefy. Same weight, this is skinny, it's kind of anemic, it's not going to show up as well on the page. And that can actually be handled by redefining uh, things in. So right here is the position. What we want is open type superior. And you can see now that's switched them all over to the uh, true version, the open type version. So we're going to click OK. I'm going to delete this because Obviously, we don't need two of those. So now all of those have been changed, uh, and yours should be two. Or uh, conversely, if you uh, don't have true superscripts in here, you could change this to um, maybe a semi bold weight of your regular weight, or a regular weight of your lightweight, something that's just fractionally heavier to fake them. That isn't obviously an ideal situation. The best is if somebody went in and by hand created a version of superscript numerals for you, but um, in a pinch it will work and is much, much better than the default of letting InDesign handle that for you um, and faking them. 
Okay, so now we got to deal with this nonsense down here. This is a little bizarre um, because, as you guys have probably found out, you cannot select all the footnotes at once. Let me back out so you can, right, when you have all of these, pressing Command A still leaves you having to do this and select them all at once. Um, big pain in the ass. So the first thing I'm going to do is return to my document footnote options. I'm going to style these as footnote text. And we're going to click OK. Now that does not, again, help me out immensely. Things are still split. You'll notice it's not. If I zoom in here, this is still a minion. This is not what I want. Right? So what I want is some sort of uh, we're going to call this, oops, I'm going to base this on body copy so that it is uh, sat here, but we're going to drive this down a bit to 8 points over 10, click OK, I'm going to double click in here. Okay, so call this footnotes for real. We got that. We are going to come down here to open type features. On this one, I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to go with proportional old style. Uh, and I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> now, normally, so you can do this, you can go through, highlight and click, highlight and click. Oops, pain in the butt, right? And occasionally, you're going to get these overrides uh, where you have to go in and clear overrides even worse, right? So this has no, well, they all have overrides in some fashion, even though I can't see them in this particular version. Somewhere in there, hiding is an override, and that's problematic. Um, and so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to use my grep command, and I'm going to find a format, and I'm going to find footnote text, which is what they originally styled as. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to change the format to footnotes for real, because that's what I want it to end up as. I'm going to find it, change it, I'm going to change all, I'm going to do 49. You can see that. And then what I'm going to do so I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to change this to put notes for real. I'm going to change it to put notes for real. I'm going to change it all. And you can see on that second go around, and I don't know why. It won't clear the overrides the first time, but it will on the second, right? Nobody said this was pretty, but it does definitely work. So there's some other things that uh, you might need to clean up. Um, one thing I might want to do now that they're all styled, well, first I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go indents and spacing. And I'm going to do an overall left indent of six, maybe we'll say. That might be too much or too little. And I'm going to hang these numerals. 
right? But because of the double digit nature of these, you might find that you have to do something quite a bit more. Um, and I suspect this is where we're going to get into a uh, nested character styles so that these can be left and then these can all hang in a line. We'll get into that in the next video, but uh, this will kind of get us there. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is making sure the space after is uh, set. Sorry, that's not through here though, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go up to um, document footnote options. This is where you're going to mess with your layouts. So this is how you control the rule. Maybe you want slashes. Maybe you want a dash. You can create your own. Um, that's all fine. Whatever. So that's there. You can turn it off entirely if you think it's distracting. Um, you can set the offset. You can set the space. Whoa, that's way too much. Right, maybe we want um, a full leaded line. There it is. That's always going to give us that. Right, maybe we don't want to allow split footnotes like this little guy over here where it breaks over. You can see indicated by that arrow. So I'm going to click that. Right, and you can see previewed on. It's going to give you some things you might want to I think I did 8 over 10, so maybe I want like an extra 2. It's going to give us just a little bit of space, not too much. Again, this is one of those times it's totally acceptable to break away from the baseline grid if it were in play. I'm going to click OK. So let's take a quick peek at this. A lot nicer. Right, not easy, not great, but now we've got true uh, superiors, we've got styled footnotes, right, we can uh, repaginate things and they'll follow, they're dynamic, um, and you guys are all set. Um, however, this big gap is pretty ugly. So there's always going to be, if we go up here, there's always going to be more stuff to fix, but believe we're all set as far as footnotes go. Hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have questions. Definitely make sure to check the blog for um, Adobe TV references, InDesign help like this. There's some really good articles that explain things in a step-by-step -step nature, so if I missed anything, take a peek at those. Thanks.